Sooner or later, we're likely to encounter a problem whose solution requires a complicated formula and some serious number crunching, some of which can't be done by hand. Let's consider a familiar example, solving a quadratic equation. This expression is composed of many different arithmetic operators that are the building blocks of most MATLAB calculations. Let's look at these building blocks before combining them into a single expression. We perform calculations by entering the corresponding mathematical expression using these common operators. By default, a non-integer result is shown to four decimal places, though the stored result contains more precision. We enter more complex formulas by using parentheses to group terms. Be sure to use an asterisk to indicate multiplication, or you'll get an error like this one. That's better. Notice that calculations that produce a very large or very small number are displayed using scientific notation. Now that we know the basics, we're ready to calculate those roots we were after. Let's define variables a, b, and c so that the MATLAB expression more closely matches the mathematical formula. Next, we enter the formula for the first root. While this expression may appear correct at first, it doesn't produce the intended result. Because MATLAB calculations follow the order of operations, we actually entered this expression. So, minus b is no longer part of the fraction, and a is not in the denominator. To get the correct result, we need to add the parentheses shown to group the numerator and denominator together. It's helpful to have a good understanding of the order of operations so that we know when to group terms with parentheses. Now that we've got the first root, we only need to change the plus sign to a minus sign to get the second root. And just like that, we're done.